Hi, today we'll be introducing NumPy arrays, how to manipulate them to access data and subarrays, how to split, reshape, and join arrays in a series of videos. So these exercise, exercises may appear a little dry, but they're the fundamentals of data analysis in Python. So almost all computational libraries like Pandas and Scikit-learn, they're built from NumPy's. So if you know how to use NumPy's, it's critical in understanding how the other libraries behave. So you can follow along with me by downloading the Python notebook that I have open right now in the link in the description. You can open up the notebook in either Jupyter Notebooks or Google Colabs. In this case, I'm using Google Colabs as you can see in the uh, icon in the upper left-hand corner. So let's get started with the basics of NumPy arrays. Let's get started with attributes. So I'm going to go down a bit in the in the notebook. I'm going to import NumPy arrays as NP first. And again, for all those beginners out there, you know that you've executed a code block or a line of code because you see the, the number here. It just basically is saying that uh, this is the first line of code that was executed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create three arrays, x1, x2, and x3. And I'm gonna basically create arrays that have random integers in it. And that's the reason why I'm using rand int, um, random rand int. Um, and just to be able to reproduce the same arrays, uh, you know, anytime I run this notebook, and if you guys run the same, the same notebook as well and seed it with a zero, you'll also be seeing the same numbers. So just for reproducibility, I'm gonna uh, use seed zero and that will just set um, the values to, to basically ensure that the same random arrays are generated each time. All right, so some important parameters to understand when using the randint function is what I'm actually doing right now is I am seeding, I am asking uh, to create a array that, ha that has elements or values from zero to 10 right here. But it's not really zero to 10 because what Python does essentially, the, the way they handle uh, ranges is that it's always inclusive in the start and exclusive in the end. So what I mean by that and, and sort of the syntax uh, that you'll see a lot is you'll see um, if we're talking about a range, you'll see you'll see this. You'll see people write this, which is, you know, a, a, a square bracket on the left and parentheses on the right. That essentially means that the zero uh, is inclusive. So when you're building an array, an array, you'll see the value zero, and at the end, the 10 is exclusive, which means that you're not gonna see the value 10. You'll see values from zero to nine. So that's sort of the, the norm, normal or, um, yeah, normal way uh, Python likes to do ranges. So just keep that in mind. So if you don't see the number 10, even though you wrote 10 here, that's perfectly normal. All right, so th this is basically the range. And then the second parameter is the size of the, the array. So I'm creating three arrays. One is um, a one, col one, one row by six column array. So six elements in the array. This is a, two by, a three by four array. Uh, so it's gonna have three rows, four columns. And this is a three dimensional array with basically, um, you know, three arrays that have four rows and five columns. So I am going to now execute this line of code and I get a number two here, which means everything went well. Nothing is displayed, of course, nothing was outputted because you know I didn't actually ask or Python to do that. I didn't ask Python to display anything, but let's just make sure we have what we think we have. So in order to just to you know display any output in Jupyter Notebooks, in Python Notebooks, all you have to do is just type in uh, the variable and you get this array here, right? And that's exactly what, what, we, 
what we're expecting. We're expecting six values because we say size six. Um, and these values are from zero to nine. There's no 10 as you see here, right? See, let's check out the second array. This is exactly what we think uh, we were expecting. So it's three rows, four columns. And then the, the third array, the bigger array is this three dimensional array, right? Three arrays, four rows, five columns, right? So one of the things that you might, as a beginner, you might try to do is you might actually try to print all of this stuff out, right? And if you actually execute that, you only get the last array, the, the X3. And that, that is actually by design. It's not going to, Python will, or a, a Python notebook is only going to display the last line of code, which is X3. So if in the same code block, if you want to print out everything, what you really need to do is just encase it in these print functions. So now you basically have all three arrays printed out and it doesn't look very good, right? It's um, the, this first one right here and then right immediately is the, the second one, the X2, and then you have the X3. But that's, that's how you do it if you wanna print all three arrays in one code block. All right, so now let's talk about attributes uh, that correspond to each variable to each array. So every array has, you know, these six attributes that are attached to it. Um, and uh, I have basically all of them written out just for reference for a resource. Uh, so if you, you know, uh, want to go back to this lecture, to this video, go ahead and just download this Python notebook, open it up, and this will be here for, you know, as a reference for you. <clears throat> So the, the first one is, and I'm not going to run this uh, code. This is again, just for reference, but I'm going to, I'm going to look at the attributes for X3. Um, so ndim gives you the number of dimensions. So if I type in X3, which is the variable dot ndim, it gives you three, which makes sense, right? It's a three dimensional, it's a three dimensional array. So I'm actually going to now just out this for reference it's a three-dimensional array right here so ndim is the number of the dim dimensions the shape we should uh, see a three four and five that's what we we uh, got three four five which is exactly this size three four five right and then size should be the number of elements in six at 60 so if you multiply three times four times five, that gives you the number of values that are found in this array. Um, you can get that with the size attribute. So another useful one uh, is dtype. This one is to me the most useful x3 dtype. It tells you the uh, data type of the array. The array will typically just have one data type. Uh, in this case, it's a 64 bit integer. Uh, which makes sense that it's an integer uh, because that's what the function random integer is obviously going to get you. All right. So this one I use almost all the time uh, just because data types need to be consistent. I need to know what I'm working with. And this uh, just this attribute is exactly what I need for a lot of uh, my, my coding to just double check to ensure that, you know, I know what data type I have. Uh, two other other ones, two other attributes. We have um, x3 item size. So item size. It lists the, the size in bytes of an array element, right? So eight bytes of, of one element in, in that array. So like this element here, this value four, it's eight, eight bytes. If we have n bytes, n bytes is basically what's the size of the entire array, 480, all right? So it's basically, you know, eight bytes times 60 elements in that array, you get 480, that makes a lot of sense. 
So those are the attributes that come with each NumPy array. You know it's an attribute because it follows the array variable and it's written like uh, array dot attribute. So let me just write it. So, you know, the variable or the array, we'll just say array dot attribute. That's exactly what the, the lines of codes above have been have been saying. So it's x3, which is the array, and then say d type, which is the attribute, right? So the, the syntax follows this each and every time, which makes it easier for you to memorize. You just have to memorize what the attributes are. Um, and it's a very common syntax in in um, in Python because it's an object oriented programming language. You you have attributes associated with each object, and in this case, the object is an array. All right. So that's actually it for NumPy attributes. Um, next, we will be talking about array indexing.